Welcome to the Money GPS. You came here for the truth, so let me unveil that for you. Michael Burry speaks again. That's the first thing I want to look at, and it's going to really set us up for all of the inflation data that I have for you today. I'm going to move through it really quick because I'm sure you've already heard much of it. The second thing I want to look at is 21 months. There has been a trend over the last 21 months, and I will show you that and why the mainstream media simply ignored it throughout this entire period. And the third thing is the recession incoming. Somebody very prominent in the financial world had said something about a recession, and I wanted to show you. Let's begin right here. You could see Michael Burry as a child, 1977, says hello. And of course, what he's warning about here is part of his previous statements. Now, this is just a simple message. He's trying to have fun with it. But if you go back to what he had talked about previously and deleted, of course, is that he is warning through a series of tweets. He was warning about the U.S. essentially looking a lot like or the world essentially looking a lot like Weimar Germany and drawing the similarities, not necessarily saying it's going to be the exact same, but showing the similarities and simply making a point. So I think this will set us up for what we are about to see here. There has been so much of a buildup throughout this period. Look at what's going on with commodities. Look at what's happening with the currency, food, energy, and just about everything. They're rising and real wages are down. I'm going to show you all of that right now. It is something that most people are completely unaware of. This can happen. Who would have known? But here we are today. Inflation rose 7.9% in February. As food and energy costs pushed prices to their highest in more than 40 years, you've probably already seen this. 7.9% is the official statistic, and we know that depending on how you calculate it, it could be as much as 15%. But like I say, it depends on you. Because for instance, if child care services have gone up considerably, but you don't have a child, or maybe your child has grown up, that doesn't have an impact on you directly. So you have to look at it in your own way. And I always suggest people take a basket of goods or their services and just see over time. And I have noted this from so many people literally all around the world have told me, oh, I used to buy this product here and it was this price. And every single year it goes up or the shrinkflation brings it down. Gas theft is on the rise as gas prices skyrocket. You know that this would have been the case. You could have predicted this one easily, but what needs to be understood here is that as prices rise, as people have less disposable income, you have more poverty. I've shown that the 10 cities like crazy, as well as crime increasing. This is going to be very common, much more common than we see today. White House expects inflation will, quote, substantially increase in the coming months. So here we are at a time in which we were told inflation would be coming down, way, way down by now. But yet it's going to not only continue, it's going to increase substantially. The only thing that makes me think that this won't happen is the fact that they said it. Because usually it's the opposite. But I can see what's happening here if you just look at the details of it. Okay, They're trying to just make everybody know in advance. Okay. This is the CPI just showing you year over year and month over month rising to levels we have not seen since 1980s. There's just one difference, though. Does anybody know what that difference was? What was the big, big difference back in 1980s? Interest rates? That's right. They were approximately 13% at that time. 13% yet today, the United States, it's zero. And also... All central banks around the world are basically zero. It is a very different time today. Here you can see the breakdown, just showing us the headline number, 7.87 to be specific, but it breaks it down with services, goods, food, and energy. And you know that food and energy has risen considerably. That's pretty obvious. Taking a look here, again, just showing you the breakdowns. 
about this CPI used cars versus the Mannheim index. Um, you could see that there has been quite a chasm in between the two. The Mannheim index is basically the wholesale market, which obviously comes first. And then you would see that show up in the CPI for used cars. Um, I've seen comments before when I showed this specifically, how there was, I believe it was in this, this period here, where you can see the green line, that's the Mannheim index, rising up. But at the same time, the CPI had kind of gone down. And I mentioned this, that this is a, you know, an odd circumstance. And, you know, I think it was more than one person anyway, was was basically suggesting that I didn't know what I was talking about. Look at the chasm in between these two. Okay, this is massive. And it's been going on for a while. So does that mean that we will see the bridge, you know, bridge being gapped, if I use the right term there? We'll see. We will see. Shelter and rent inflation year over year change that keeps going up as well. I'm hearing all kinds from you and as well as the data that I'm pulling up. Rents are increasing every. We know the house prices are increasing. We know that. But with mortgage rates rising, you could see that people are not refinancing their homes anymore to a less degree. And you're seeing with the prices of you know lumber and all other commodities increasing as well, there has been somewhat of a stagnation in the housing market. But there's in many cities with um, you know inventories being so low, it can keep the prices elevated. It doesn't mean that we just crash. Okay, suddenly it crashes. No, no, no. We're not there yet. But anyway, if you have any data that you want to share related to rent prices, related to housing prices in general, put it in the comments below. I love reading about that. This is just, you know, when we look at the core, so-called core rate of inflation, less food and energy year over year, it's 6.4%. Okay, it's, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. So you can't just blame it on food and energy. It's increasing everywhere. And like I said in the earlier part, your real wages have declined. They are saying, you know, people got a raise. Yes, yes, that's great. But if you factor in inflation, you didn't get a raise. So who caused all this inflation? Well, underlying all of this since the financial crisis time frame, never ignore what happened during the financial crisis time frame. Please, what happened? They pumped out a lot of money. They created a lot of stimulus programs. All of that money sloshing through the system. Then we got to 2020. And before, if you looked, heading 2019 into 2020, the economy was slowing down. The yield curve was going into the negative. We know that. We saw what was happening. All the signs were there. And then a big event. And so they pumped in more money than they ever had in history. Hmm. Interesting. Whether or not, you know, we could say a lot about that, but I would just say that it's an opportunity to say the least. Now we switch pages, turn the pages, we switch gears, whatever metaphor you want to use. Europe's riskiest bonds plunge as ECB ramps up the tightening pledge. Did I just read that correctly? Am I seeing things? Do I need to pinch myself? The ECB is suggesting that they're going to tighten more quickly. I, I'm reading it. I'm not believing it. I mean, maybe the Fed, Bank of Canada has already done this, other central banks, but the ECB? What's next? Japan? My goodness. ECB signals it's more concerned over inflation than growth. Wow. Money market brings forward bets for pace of rate hikes. So we will see what the ECB does. Obviously, stay tuned to the channel. Hit that thumbs up. When you do, you are more likely to see these in your recommended feed. So I want to thank you for that. And of course, you look at this. I believe Italy was one of the countries that they mentioned in here. Here you can see when doves cry, Italian yields jump as ECB decision more hawkish than expected. Wow. Can it be a situation in which you know, the market will start reflecting reality. Okay. I talked about it in my book, by the way. Um, my was my second book, I think, or was it both books? But basically suggesting 
that what we see with Spain and Italy is very important. Two heavily indebted nations that have no way of growing out of their problems. And so, you know, we can point our fingers at different places for different reasons, but I'm going to mention it again. Keep an eye out. Now, who was that person that talked about an incoming or, or the, the lack of an in, uh, incoming recession? And that means there is, in fact, an incoming recession. It is Janet Yellen, your favorite, my favorite, Janet Yellen. Yellen sees uncomfortably high 2022 inflation. But guess what? No recession. Treasury chief avoids making new forecasts for inflation. Yellen repeats confidence in the Fed's ability to tame inflation. I think there's a lot of uncertainty that's related to what's going on with Russia and Ukraine. I do think it's exacerbating inflation. We've got a good, strong economy with an excellent, excellent outlook for the labor market and real activity going forward. Inflation is a problem, and it's one we need to address. But check this out. I don't expect a recession in the United States. You remember what she said? She had that famous quote, not going to see another crisis in our lifetimes. Hmm. Well, there was a 2020 crisis and one potentially not too far off. I don't know. Well, we'll see. I know, I know already the people have been feeling the crisis today. People have started to, and I think I have that article here, had it somewhere, essentially saying people have already changed their lifestyle because of what's happening with gas and food prices. Let me get to this and then and then I'll touch on it really quickly. Okay. We estimate this is Goldman Sachs. We estimate that rising gas and food prices will create an effective 0.7 percentage point drag on real disposable personal income. So they've quantified that. Is it that significant? Uh, you know, for some people, it's actually going to be significant. For some, it depends. Like, it depends on, on who you are. Okay, how much cash you got. And they, they break it down. Gas, food prices, obviously food being very, very serious. The yield curve implies roughly 20 to 35% odds of a recession over the next year. This is very important to watch, a very, very important indicator to see the yield curve. Really, to you, the individual, to me, it, it doesn't matter that, you know, what the yields are priced at, but it happens to be a, an extremely accurate indicator. So I will keep an eye on that for you. And remember, it's not when it goes to the point of inversion, it's when it comes back up that usually a recession follows. So we will see what goes on. Um, I do think it's important for people to understand this, that during these periods of time, when we have rising prices, and it's on the food and energy that people take to the streets. So my message to you is to be prepared, to be concerned about it, but don't just sit on your hands. No, get your stuff in order, prepare. That's my message to you. If you appreciate it, hit that thumbs up button. That's all you got to do to support this channel. Okay, there are people, you know, donating on PayPal and Patreon and all these different ways. But if you just get that thumbs up, and I should mention that, you know, anybody that watches the advertisements is supporting the creator. I'll say that as well. Okay, I want to thank you for that. And you must stay tuned because I think I had a second video ready to go. I, I got to record that and hopefully get that out to you the same day that you're watching this. Okay, lots of data to cover. Make sure you're subscribed. I'll see you on the next one.